Peace be with you. I am Father Joel Aquino. Please join me every Tuesday at 7 in the evening Pacific Time and 10 in the evening Eastern Time for an hour of conversations about Word of God and our Christian mission in relation to the many issues that we are facing today through Servants on Air here at PHLV Radio. Please download the PHLV Radio app from the Apple Store and Google Play where we will have a wide ranging and honest discussions on such topics, especially on Christian faith and relationships. We will also be hearing experiences with God from our brothers and sisters, and hopefully this will enlighten us as to live out our day-to-day -day Christian life. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 18, verses 15 to 20. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother or sister has sinned against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are in private. And if he listens to you, you have won your brother. If you are not listened to, take with you one or two others so that the case may be decided by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he still refuses to listen to them, tell it to the assembled church. But if he does not listen to the church, then regard such one as a pagan or a publican. I say to you, whatever you bind on earth, heaven will keep bound. And whatever you unbind on earth, heaven will keep unbound. In like manner, I say to you, if on earth two of you are united in asking for anything, it will be granted by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. My dear friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, today, the Lord in our, in our Gospel wants us to look back the many important things in our Christian uh, relationship. If you remember that the second commandment is to love our neighbor. And if you and I are ordered by the Lord to love God, it is at the same time we have to deepen that love and allow that love to be incarnated in real acts of kindness. And we can only fulfill the greatest commandment of God if we truly learn how to love our neighbor, our brothers and sisters. By virtue of our baptism, we are all God's children. We become brothers and sisters in the mystical body of Christ. In fact, even those who do not belong to our Christian community, we have to regard them as well as God's children. Because God doesn't only look at the people whom, whom uh, we receive the 
Christian baptism, but everyone is God's children. So when we want to live out God's greatest commandment of loving Him and our neighbor, it is not simply an exclusive relationship for the people we loved and for the people that we know of. My dear friends, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, today, the Lord helps us practically how to go through with some differences and some tensions that we experience in our Christian community. This has been our struggle. This has been, um, a, in fact, a daily uh, experience in our Christian communities. Um, we fall short in many of our decisions and we struggle when it comes to a relationship with the people around us. And whatever our decisions, whatever our actions, it is always affecting the people around us. And whether we like it or not, um, we have this tendency, really, to uh, seek our own self, what is best for us, and what is uh, important to us, what is valuable for us. And we place uh, the needs of other people uh, at the very least of all the concerns. Because primarily, we look at the <laughs> our own needs, the needs of our family, more than the, just the need of other people. Uh -huh. And this has been uh, a problematic part of our day-to-day uh, -day Christian life. And all of us are in this situation. And sometimes we use this standard of of uh, doing things according to our own learnings, according to um, our own way of looking at things, our own perspective. But whatever our um, background is, whatever is our decision or perspective, let us not forget that God wants us to deepen our relationship with each other. God knows that in every relationship, there's always a struggle because we are all created uniquely by the Lord and we don't share um, a lot of things we don't share um, thoughts and perspective with other people. We have our own opinion. We have our own decision. We have our own way of putting things according to our own uh, estimation. But regardless of that, God wants us still to overcome these differences. He wants us to keep the level of uh, relationship according to God's standard. And God's standard is that people has to be in communion with each other in as much as we are in communion with God. Today, practically, the Lord is teaching us how to overcome these challenges in our relationships with our brothers and sisters. He said to his disciples, if your brother or sister has sinned against you, go and point out the faults when the two of you are in private. So, the Lord knows that from time to time, we struggle with this relationship with our neighbor. And um, 
we may not assume that you are right or the the or your brother or sister is right or um we are in the position to tell the person that we are in in the authority but regardless of our position and background and perspective still god's point is that we have to learn how to win back our brothers and sisters what is important for the lord is to reestablish and deepen our relationship with our neighbor so reconciliation for the lord is important that is the spirit in god's kingdom division uh, and indifference is not the work of god the lord knows that from time to time we will disagree we will be uh, sharing different thoughts and perspectives but regardless of who is right or wrong god wants us to be reconciled okay sometimes when we approach the person if the person is um, bad or if the person is uh like at fault sometimes in the course of doing that we have the intention of like proving to them that we are right okay but that is not exactly what the lord wants us to accomplish in this particular text it is not to prove that they are wrong and that we are right but the thing is God wants us to win back our brother and our sister. God's intention is to allow the spirit of compassion and and communion be the very spirit that will heal these differences. and wounds that created from this opposing uh, uh, perspectives when the lord pursue this winning of our brother or sister in the community he wants us to be conscious as well of of um an effort not just by us but an effort as well from the community that's why the lord uh, involved the case or this situation to uh, of calling the other witnesses or the other members of the community and ultimately to the assembled church okay um and if the person will not listen to the church the lord said well we have to regard that person as a pagan okay um my dear friends brothers and sisters in christ jesus do you exert effort in weaning back our brothers and sisters in the community or in our respective families remember that uh even in our own household oftentimes we hurt each other we fall short in the many things that we do in our own household and we offend our loved ones in many occasions and situations in our family life how do we go through of um winning them back let us not forget that we are not 
the judge. And we are not here to judge our brothers and sisters. While the Lord is giving us the task of uh, telling the truth to the person, and we have to listen, on the other hand, about their side, because uh, we may see and um, realize that they have other reasons why they did that or why they do such a thing. So it's important to be able to listen to their side, not just really of telling them of what they did was wrong, but to be able to listen to their side. Again, our intention is not to put the person down or to add insult to injury, right? That's not our intention. But rather, to be able to win back our neighbor, our brothers and sisters, to assist them and help them and to be reconciled with them. When we do that, we bring that relationship into a deeper a deeper uh, element of uh, relationship. So, my dear friends, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, today's gospel reading, the Lord invites us to develop a heart for our brothers and sisters. Um, let us accept the reality. We fall short in our words, in our actions, in our decisions. I mean, no one is exempted from that, even myself. I fall short. I have my own imperfections. I have my own demons as well in my heart as a human person. But this should not stop us from overcoming the, the, the imperfections and the evil tendencies we have. Let us help each other. When we realize that there is something wrong, and let us humble ourselves and reflect, examine what uh, need to be done, what need to be changed, and if others are um, courageous in telling us what's really wrong, then let us listen to their uh, side. And when we listen to them, um, it is not really to put the person down, but for us to be able to to see and appreciate and examine what went wrong that we may assess the situation well and ultimately to be able to come up with the decision of of reconciling our brothers and sisters reconciliation and forgiveness is a, a big part of God's kingdom. It's a huge program of God's kingdom. May we have always the courage to look at ourselves and to be able to change the things that we need to change. On the other hand, let us also be courageous of um, looking at the things that our brothers and sisters are in need of. Let us ask God's Spirit to help us and to that He may continue to transform 
our ways and bring forth the love of God, His compassion and mercy, especially when we witness and experience the tragedy of, of our brothers and sisters. We are not here to judge. We are not here to condemn. But we are here to help each other. That is the power of the Word of God. The power of Jesus that He entrusted to His disciples. The power to forgive. The power to unify. The power to bring forth peace in the midst of uh, differences. Amen. Let us pray. Most loving God, we praise and adore you. We thank you for all the blessings you have given us. We thank you, O oh God, for directing us to the virtue of unity, reconciliation, and forgiveness. It's a tough decision, Lord, to be able to accept the differences and the faults of the people around us. But Lord, you prove to us that love, mercy, and compassion is even greater and powerful. Transform our hearts. Give us this grace of forgiveness and compassion so that many more relationships may be reconciled. Continue, God, to bless our relationship with you, that we may desire to be one with you. And at the same time, Lord, even in the most challenging situations of our relationship with our brothers and sisters, Continue to help us. Bless our human hearts. Direct us, especially when we are overcome by our emotions and human tendencies. Grant us, O oh Lord, humility to be able to accept the things that we need to change, that we need to be transformed. Enlighten us, Lord, and may we truly grow into your image and likeness. And we make this prayer in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Peace be with you. I am Father Joel Aquino. Please join me every Tuesday at 7 in the evening Pacific Time and 10 in the evening Eastern Time for an hour of conversations about Word of God and our Christian mission in relation to the many issues that we are facing today through Servants on Air here at PHLB Radio. Please download the PHLB Radio app from the Apple Store and Google Play, where we will have a wide ranging and honest discussions on such topics, especially on Christian faith and relationships. We will also be hearing experiences with God from our brothers and sisters, and hopefully this will enlighten us as to live out our day-to-day -day Christian life. Good evening, brothers and sisters. We are now on 
our program here at PHLV. It's Servants on Air. And this is Father Joel Aquino once again. Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. At uh, ngayong gabi, we're just so blessed to have two of our special guests from Las Vegas. And meron silang mahalagang isishare sa atin, lalong-lalo na yung kanilang experience nung nag-start itong uh, global pandemic of the COVID-19. No, marami sa atin ang naapektuhan, marami sa atin ang nawala ng pag-asa, nawala ng, ng uh, buhay. No, parang ayaw na natin ayaw na natin i-continue yung buhay natin. But these two uh, ladies will surely give us um, an important uh, lesson. They will share with us lessons about the tragedy of this global pandemic of the COVID-19. At sana kapulutan po natin ng aral ang kanilang uh, storya. Please help me welcome. Uh, we have our guest, uh, Miss Catherine Tejero and Miss Bernadette Minicelli. Yeah, no. um, Catherine, uh, sige, ikaw nga muna. Please uh, greet your family and friends sa Las Vegas at saka sa Philippines. Okay. Tinatawag po natin si Catherine ng cake. <laughs> Mas short po, Father. And easier. Uh, good evening po, Father. Good evening, good evening. po sa um, lahat ng nanon- nakikinig o nanonood ng PHLV Radio. Um, binabati ko rin po ang aking mga families here dito sa Las Vegas on my mother's side at saka po sa California on my father's side. Uh, ganun din po ang family ko sa Philippines in Lucena City and ang aking hopefully po marinig po at mapanood ng family ko po ngayon sa Dubai. Oh, nako all, all over the world ka pala kay. Ano? Napakalaki ng <laughs> Opo, nako magandang gabi sa iyo at saka magandang gabi sa lahat ng kapamilya at kapuso ni Kay. Ayun, thank you. And then let's hear from Bernadette Minicelli. Oh, she is a proud Bisaya. <laughs> oh, Hello everyone. Um, welcome to the Las Vegas. Um, hello to all the Cebuano. Welcome to the. Is this a show or a talk show? Yeah, it's a servant on the air. Servant on the air. Oh. Okay. Hello everyone. Oh, so, so San ba ikaw sa Philippines? Uh, Sister Bernadette. Um, I was Bernadette. born in Cebu, the Queen Cebu. City of the South. Oh wow, talaga ang <laughs> adjective talaga great talaga. <laughs> uh, I am then, I am proud Cebuana. Oh wow. And then si K, taga saan kayo sa Pilipinas K? I was born father in Quezon City, but I grew up in Lucena City, Quezon Province. Oh, oh po, Tagalog naman kayo. Tagalog kayo. po talaga ako, Tagalog. Um, oh, oh. Well, um, napakaganda ng, ano, no, ng gabing ito dahil pinaunlakan tayo ng dalawang matatapang na mga babae. No? Matapang ito sila. <laughs> <laughs> Matapang ito sila dahil grabe yung pinagdaanan po nila nung nag-start ang COVID-19 kasi silang dalawa at ang family nila nagka-COVID. Um, I would like to ask uh, Miss Bernadette Minicelli, uh, can you just uh, share with us ano ba ang nangyari? Bakit kayo nagka Nagkasakit. Anong nangyari sa inyo? Oh, um, it happened last year in November. Mm-hmm. And then, I'm not really sure where I got it. 
because uh, so when on that evening when I came home I started to have a fever mm -hmm. but at the back of my mind I already said like oh maybe I I get the COVID because mm -hmm. I just don't I'm not feeling good at that time so I have to get a temperature and then it's like 103 and then I think it went up to like 108 mm -hmm. and then it never go down until like the following afternoon but it repeats itself so on mm -hmm. the next morning I went to the quick care so I did call in that I'm not coming into work because I had a fever mm -hmm. so I went to the quick care and you know they swabbed me and my work they were so eager to know because there's a lot of work to do at mm -hmm. work so they told me that you have to come down here to make sure because we can do it like on the next day the result mm -hmm. so actually on that day I swabbed twice mm -hmm. so I went to work in the afternoon they just leave the test in the garage and then I went there mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. finally on the next day they called me you are positive oh, and wow. then the later like I think in the third day then the Clark County told me that I'm positive too so I started wow. to quarantine. Mm -hmm. What was your reaction when you found out that you had COVID? Were you scared? Were yeah, you I was so scared. Panicked? You know what I did? I called the Philippines <laughs> right away and I told them that this is my will. I already have my will just in case something happened, but you don't have to worry because everything is taken care of. <laughs> that's, that's what you know, at the back of my brain, that's what I say, like, oh, I have to tell them because I don't really know. Because when mm -hmm. you listen to people, what they say, what they experience is very mm -hmm. bad. So mm -hmm. my, what I did when it happened, I just like I made a diary every day. Mm -hmm. So I jot down every day what happened and what I feel. So like... Mm -hmm. I'm still waiting. What's next? What's next? Because, mm -hmm. you know, listening to the people that they have, like, oh, it's so scary. You have. So mm -hmm. I said, like, what's next? So I only noticed, like, on my seventh day that I have, I had a hard time breathing. But Kay is a nurse, so I called her. Oh, you <laughs> I, Yeah. But she, I, I got the COVID first. She got uh -huh. on December, yeah, Kay? Mm -hmm. So oh. I called her, Kay. What I'm oh. gonna do, just like I had a hard time breathing, and Kay told me, mm. Oh, Mamita, don't go to the hospital. If you can handle, just you know, just stay home. Don't. So, me, I'm just still scared. So, what I did, I packed all my stuff that I need. So, I had mm. the luggage because just in case we're so close to the hospital, it's just like right across. I can even walk if mm. you know if it's really bad. So, to go. yeah, so because they told me that. Oh, you once, you know, you're in the hospital, nobody can visit you. So you better take everything, whatever you need. So that's what I did. Mm -hmm. And Kay told me, now, no, Mamita, don't, don't watch this. Don't go to the hospital if you can handle. And she, I uh, know, see, uh, what did you tell me, Kay, about your boss? Because she got the COVID too. As I told you that as long as you're, you know, I hope your your saturations, your oxygen saturation doesn't go below like a certain number, like below 92, then you should be good and still stay home and take care and, of yourself. And then you told me that, do you have a cough syrup in there? And you said like, yeah, I have, I have a leftover because on that year, I went to Hawaii, remember on February and I get sick. So I went to the quick care again. I said like, Oh, doc, can you check me? Uh, maybe I have COVID. And then the doctor laughing like, no, you don't have a COVID. You just have like, uh, uh, what's this? Uh, you're no. coughing because, you know, the weather change and everything. Oh, okay. so, so he prescribed me uh, like a uh, cough syrup that's like strong. Mm -hmm. And then I look at the, <laughs> I look at the expiration and I told Kay, Kay, it's not expired yet. And then Kay said, like, no, take that, take that. <laughs> <laughs> wow so but after then, like three uh, days it went away uh -huh. i heard that you're gonna lost your taste you know 
But me, no. I just like, I'm the only COVID person that I eat a lot. I, I over <laughs> every time. Like, so oh. you, you did not lost your, your appetite? How about the sense of smell? Oh, okay. I never did. I lost my smell. Oh. Lost my so, mm. so the wow. only thing I really experience is the fever. The fever. Mm. Did you have coughing, like a severe coughing, dry coughing? No, I'm not even coughing. Oh, I so you okay? How... Yeah, okay. Is that uh, what you call asymptomatic? She, she no. has symptoms, po, Father, because oh. remember, she had fever. fever. But let's just say na yung symptoms po niya is not severe. Ah, I see. Mm -hmm. Mild lang yung symptoms niya. Oh, mild lang. Pero COVID pa rin. Yes, po, Father. Nakatakot pa rin, ano? Yes. Oh, my Lord. And then, ilan kayo sa family na nagkasakit? Nagkahawa ba sila, uh, Bernadette? Oh, you know what? Because I was positive, and then John, my husband, became positive too. Oh wow! But so John, nahawa, nahawa siya sa you. Yeah, but John doesn't have any symptoms. Too. Oh no, he got a fever. Oh wow! But I heard that you're not supposed to eat. You're not supposed to drink cold. You're only gonna drink hot. But John was eating ice cream all the time for 14 oh, days wow. of quarantine. He's just eating ice cream. And I told him, you're not supposed to eat ice cream because cold is not supposed to be good for COVID. But he said, no, but maybe ice cream can cure COVID because look what happened to me. I keep on eating ice cream, nothing happened. Oh. Wow. All right. Thank you so much no, for uh, giving us a brief uh, storytelling of uh, COVID experience. Ninyo. And can we ask Kay, naman, ano bang nangyari? Nagka-COVID din kayo. So, ikaw ba nahawa kay Bernadette? <laughs> no, we never see each other. Kasi siya ang nauna. Baka nung tumawag sa sayo. <laughs> sa kabo. <laughs> hindi, hindi po, Father. Um, unfortunately po, um, nahawa po kami is um, from my son. My three-year-old son. So uh, bali po pumat we um we enrolled him in a daycare. Hindi na po natin sasabihin yung pangalan. Ano po? So Opo, bali po um, ano half day siya a week doon and then mm -hmm. um during that second week ng November, he went to school on a Monday. And mm -hmm. um and then um Wednesday he went to school again. And that's when we found out na Meron pala pong bata na nung Monday pa, the parents were not feeling good. Pero po yung bata is asymptomatic. So wala pong lagnat, wala pong ubo. Pinapasok po ng magulang yung dalawang bata. At yung magulang po ay hindi rin po sigurado kung COVID yun dahil hindi pa po na test. So uh -huh. by Wednesday po that week, um, dahil hindi nga po nawawala yung um, nararamdaman ng magulang, nagpa-test po yung mag-anak na yun at doon po nalaman na positive po sila. So, ang nangyari po, in-inform po nila yung school. So, yung school po, in-inform po kami kasi that day po, yung anak ko po, po, yung panganay po namin is um, nakasalamuha po nung bata na yun. So, wow. so that Wednesday, um, nalaman po namin is late na mga gabi na po. So the next day pa po kami nagpa-test. Kami pong mag-anak. Mm -hmm. So ang nangyari po, um, positive po si ano yung panganay namin, si Miquel. Mm -hmm. Siya po yung mm -hmm. una nag-positive. So father, at that point, he's three years old. Um, oh. How do you quarantine at three years old? Ang nasa isip po namin is, pati po kami talaga, feeling namin magkakaroon na kami. Kasi po kung Monday po po niya nakasama yung bata, Wednesday pa po niya nalaman, Kasama po namin siya sa kwarto, paliligo, pagkain, dito sa bahay. So, para pong tot, naisip na po talaga namin na talagang magkakaroon na din po kami. So, wow. ang nangyari po is, na, the, the Saturday, nakaramdam na po kami ng asawa ko, or si Mike, ng, um, ng symptoms. Bali po lagnat. Um, para pong matinding trangkaso ang nangyari sa amin. Matinding trangkaso. 
Tapos po, um, pati po yung bunso namin, si Kai, nagkaroon din po kasi he tested. That Saturday, lahat po kami nag-test po. Positive na po kami. The four of you? Actually, there's more. Kasi po, that time, um, kalalabas lang po nung mother-in-law ko sa hospital and they live with us sa para po sa isang kwarto sa downstairs. So although oh. we quarantined, we asked them to actually um, test. So mm-hmm. nag-positive din po ang aming um, oh ang aming father in ang aking father-in-law at oh. saka po nagkataon kasi nga po kalalabas lang po sa ospital ng aking mother-in-law yung oh. dalawa po din yung anak um, anak na babae nag-positive. Oh my god. So lahat kayo sa buong family Yes po kasi father ko oh, ki, ki, um, kilala niyo po yung aking panganay, he's malambing. Hindi oh, po namin syempre po paggaling siguro nung school nung Monday, naghello po dun sa lolo, naghello po dun sa sa oh, kanyang yeah. mga tita. Oh, Yun po. So oh, <laughs> nagkahawahan na po. Nagkahawa na. And then a- anong passing ano yung uh, COVID yun, mga symptomatic pa kayo? Um, Severe na- po, ano? Um, ang nangyari po, Father, is lahat po kami feeling ano under the weather talaga na parang matinding flu. So masakit ang katawan, oh. may ubo, may lagnat. Um, oh ako po personally, ang akin pong lagnat is on and off for the first week. Mm-hmm. Tapos po, yun nga, um, tapos towards the fifth day po, medyo nakaramdam po ako ng hindi uh, pag kasi kukuha po ako sa baba ng halimbawa po pagkain, aakit po kami dito sa taas. Uh-huh. Ano po talaga siya? Um, hirap pong huminga. Pero uh-huh. chinicheck ko po yung aming um, oxygen saturations. Okay naman po. Ma- uh-huh. Mataas, 94-95. So nandun, nandun po yung pangamba. Like um, sabi po ni, ni Ate Bernadette na Mm-hmm. Anong mangyayaring kasunod? Kasi po sa lahat ng mga kwento pong naririnig namin, pwede pong kasing mag-turn to, for the worst. Yes. So yun mm-hmm. po ang aming, aming um, naiisip noon. So mm-hmm. yun na po, alaga lang po kasi ako po may headache, may ubo, mm-hmm. tapos masakit ang katawan. So alaga po sa gamot ng para sa flu at saka alaga mm-hmm. po sa gamot ng ubo at saka po... Mm-hmm. Um, sa para po parang immune booster po umiinom din po ako noon. Tsaka po maraming mm-hmm. water. Mm-hmm. Wow, talagang napakahirap yung mga time na yun kasi nagkasakit kayo yung both families ninyo na wala pa ring vaccine, 'di ba? Last year ito. Yes po, Father. And oh. and I think po ang mahirap po doon, Father, is yung mga bata po. Kasi mm-hmm. madam it's unknown po kasi kung ano ang mangyayari. Pero kung nung nakita ko po sila na Parang ano po eh, may sipon lang, nilagnat oh. ng konti, may sinat, pero hindi po talagang mataas yung lagnat nila. Nagpapasalamat po ako na ganun ang nangyari. Ang mm-hmm. ano lang po is, may sakit kaming mag-asawa, tapos yung mga bata po is very active. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mahirap po na you, ha- you have no downtime. Na may sakit ka, you have to really take care of them still. Kasi po walang ibang gagawa. Mm-hmm. Oo, si Kwa naman, Bernadette naman, kumusta yung mga anak ninyo yung time na yun? Kasi kayong dalawang mag-asawa ang nagkasakit, hindi ba sila naapektuhan? No, um, my youngest daughter, Selvina, we mm. told her to test. Because uh-huh. we want to make sure. Because at that time, mm. when, I got, uh, when I got positive and John got positive, so we have to do in a separate room. Because I told John, I don't know what's my impact and I don't know what's your impact. So mm-hmm. it's better to separate. But my daughter was still here. So mm-hmm. we told her to, uh, you know, to get a test. And then as soon as she found out that she's negative. So I told her, go, you know, go to your other sister so that oh, only no. us here are positives. Because you are not positive yet. So you go. So she left. So just like she was out here like maybe 20 days because mm. I, so I never told them to come back until cause uh-huh. you know, I still get scared like no I, I don't want to you know I want to make sure that we're not mm. you know we don't have it anymore so uh-huh. there's no procedure allowed like uh-huh. you know. so ang nangyari nun kayo ni Jan ang naiwan sa bahay ninyo yes but kung, but kung, ganun, ba, 
kung dalawa kayong nagkasakit, uh, since pareho na kayong may sakit, uh, okay lang ba yun na you stay in the same place, like in the same room? O no, kailangan separate? We're not, yeah, we're, we're separating room because mm-hmm. I don't really know, as what I said, I don't know what's my impact. Maybe mm-hmm. she's, you know, maybe he's not that bad and I'm the bad, so mm-hmm. I don't want to, you know. Oh. So, because wow. K- kumusta yung ano y- yung while nakakwarat separate kayo ng rooms kumusta yung how did you communicate with John since nasa isang uh, bahay lang kayo text text, text. <laughs> and then when he go downstairs to get something he's gonna tell me don't go downstairs because I'm gonna go there and oh. spray Lysol spray Lysol <laughs> ako may naalala ko dyan sa Lysol <laughs> He's so paranoid with Lysol. <laughs> Talaga. Wow. E, e, Kay naman sa inyo, um, siyempre nasa taas kayo, no? yung kayo yung mag-asawa pati mga bata. Hindi mo naman siyempre ma-separate yung mga bata sa inyo kasi nga maliliit pa sila. So yung iba lang, I mean yung, yung mother-in-law mo lang at saka yung Uh, yung nasa baba. Uh, yung yes, mga no, ilo- Father. Ilo- oh. so, bali po, ang nangyari po is kami po sa taas ng family, ta- ako po at yung mga bata nasa kabilang room. Tapos po si Mike po, yung asawa ko po nasa ka- isang room. Bali, in-isolate din niyo po yung sarili niya. Tapos sa baba wow. po, yung mother-in-law ko po, kasi hindi po siya uh, negative po yung kanyang, kanyang um, hindi po siya nagkasakit sa lahat po sa amin. So she stayed Imagine. in the room. And then wow. yung father-in-law ko po nasa sala. Hindi po siya. Mm-hmm. Siya po ang hindi lumalabas yung mother-in-law ko po. Mm. Wow. Ang hirap talaga ng situation na yun. Nung, nung, kasi ilang days yun? Ilang days yun na ganun kayo? Sa inyo, sa Minichelli family, ilang days kayong ganun? Was okay. it 20 days? You said 20 okay. days? My work told me when I reach 14 days, I have to go back. to mm-hmm. test because they really want me to go back to work. Mm-hmm. So on my 14 days, I went back to test. Oh my God, on the next day, I still positive. Wow. So I said like, wow, I'm already 15 days and I'm still positive. So mm-hmm. my um, my HR told me, come back after four days. Mm-hmm. So uh, don't come back tomorrow because... What if you're still positive? We're just gonna waste the testing. So mm-hmm. on my 20th day, mm-hmm. I went back. And then I was even hopeless because at that time I start coughing. I said, like, oh my mm-hmm. God, maybe I still have the COVID because why I'm coughing now. Uh-huh. So I was worried. So I was really like um I, I don't know what was the term. I was sad because I really want to go back to work and Me, myself, noticed that, no, I'm not feeling good. Just like I'm sick now. Mm-hmm. So I said, and then my HR told me, just come and, you know, test. Just want to make sure. So, but at the back of my mind, I said like, nah, that's still positive. So mm-hmm. I don't need, I'm not even excited. Just like I'm, I was like sad. And then, and finally, mm-hmm. like three o'clock on the next day, three o'clock in the afternoon, my boss called me. And then I'm not even excited. And she told me, Bernie, you're negative. You can come back to work. So, oh, thanks God. Like I was so happy. And then it happens on Thanksgiving. Mm. So on Thanksgiving day, I was working mm. because Thank I had to catch up for like 20 days of work. Mm. So I, and then I told the kids that we're not going to see each other on Thanksgiving. That's the first Thanksgiving that, We never celebrate. Oh. So they did their own Thanksgiving and we order uh, Chow King on our Thanksgiving, me and John. <laughs> That's the first time that we don't have any Thanksgiving because the kids oh. to- told us, mom, you guys can just come because, you know, you guys are negative already. But I told myself, no, it's too soon. No, Hindi it's ba okay. nila kayo ano, pinayagan na, na magtrabaho sa bahay na lang? No, company. on my on my part, Father, I'm the only person that cannot work from home. 
because mm. of all the machine that I need, I cannot take it home. So yeah. I have to really go to work. Mm -hmm. I wish I can just, you know, bring it here. Sa inyong so, case, Kay, uh, paano yung work mo nung time na yun? So father kasi sa amin, um, we, have, we have our own set of rules kasi ako asymptomatic. So I, mm -hmm. I cannot work. Uh -huh. that's, that's part of um, the rule at work. Mm -hmm. Since uh -huh. I'm asymptomatic, I can't work. Pero po um ang ang job ko po um I can work from home. Mm -hmm. uh, kasi yung uh, yung iba naman no na na nagkaroon ng ganito, nahirapan sila sa ano yung sa trabaho nila tapos uh, yung iba na apektuhan na emotionally, psychologically. How is it like naman sa inyo? Kasi being a mom, I mean you are both of you are working mom, right? So mahirap Parang ang hirap nung papel ninyo. Parang ang mahirap yun. No, paano niyo ba na-overcome yung emotional, psychological na na na, na impact nito sa inyo? Being a uh, a person who is active not just in taking care of your children but at the same time uh, you're also working Sige ka. Um, ako po, father, is ano, um, talagang lakasan po ng loob, father. Kasi po, syempre po, as a nurse po, um, yun po ang pinanghugutan namin eh, na parang kailangan po malakas ang loob mo. Kasi po, for example po, um, in our family po, kasi if my, let me say this po, kasi po syempre meron pong anxiety na when is this gonna end? So mm -hmm. ang sa akin po is, we take it one day at a time na kailangan malakas ang loob mo para sa mga anak mo. Kailangan mo magtrabaho, kailangan mo silang alagaan. You find ways po, Father. Tapos po, syempre, you take care of your partner, lalo na kung nag-aalala para sa sarili mo, para sa mga anak mo. Um, you have to find ways po, Father. At saka, syempre po, lakas ng loob at dasal po talaga, matinding dasalan po. <laughs> Ano, ano po, Father, let's, let's say it this way. Um, kahit po sarado ang sentries noon, para lang po makalabas, kasi nga po, di ba, naka-quarantine po tayo. Para po makalabas, we, we drive there po, kahit hindi po kami uh -huh. nakapasok. We drive there po. Tapos nasa labas po kami ng sentries. We pray. Wow. Wow. Praise God. Eh, sa inyo naman, sa Minichelli family, uh, you being a mom, being an active din sa trabaho ninyo, how was it like? Paano nyo na-overcome yung psychological, emotional impact ng illness na yun? For me, I think because I was so busy at work, so sometimes mm -hmm. I forget about it that this thing is exist. So, but because of John, my husband, Actually, he's my hero. So mm -hmm. for as long he's there, I'm not worried. Just like I'm so safe mm -hmm. as long he's around. But if he's not around, then maybe I get crazy. But he always assured that, you know, we're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, I'm not really worried because he's always there. He's always stand by me. Like, you know, I'm just like me. I <laughs> don't Yes. Yeah. Stand by me. Stand by me. <laughs> wow, ang ganda naman ng story no na na kaya pala natin na i-overcome na kahit na life threatening yung pandemic. Pero pag nandoon pala yung willpower at saka yung yung strength and courage over and above from the fear, eh, kaya mo palang ma-overcome yun. Diba? At uh, kasi mahirap din sa part ninyo be, bilang mga working mothers. Kasi siyempre, iba kasi yung nanay, no? Kasi uh, unang-una, concern mo yung mga anak. Mga anak, paano papakainin sila. So, ang dami yung iniintindi. You know? Um, 
parang ang hirap ng kung ako ang nag-iisip sa ganun, parang sobrang ano, uh, sobrang sure. bigat lang ng pasanin. Eh ano naman yung nagbigay sa inyo ng strength over these um, struggles and tough situations ng buhay ninyo? Siguro makonsider nyo ba ito na isa sa mga pinakamahirap na experience ng buhay ninyo itong nangyari na nagkasakit kayo ng COVID? Okay. Yes po, Father. Kasi um, up to now po talaga, Father, we're struggling po. Mm-hmm. Siyempre, kasi lalo na ngayon, rising na naman po ang number ng Delta virus. Mm-hmm. So on the back of our heads or uh, on our minds, we're kind of like, okay, if the school closes this time, what are we gonna do? So I think po, Father, ang, ang preparation po kasi namin na sa family namin this time is since um, talaga po ang pinag-usapan namin is ako po muna ang mag-work. Kasi po yung, mm-hmm. kasi something happens, at least po, there, the, other parents can, the other parent can take care of the kids at home. Yun po kasi ang mahirap eh. What if po nagsara yung daycare? What if po the school said, oh, we can't, we can't have in-person schooling. So what are we gonna do as a parent po? So bali yun po ang naging naging decision namin. So that's how we do it po ngayon, Father. So hopefully, like I said kanina po, we take it um one day at a time. Mm-hmm. Sa inyo naman, sa Minichelli family. Uh, for us, like, I don't know, because I don't have the small child children already oh kasi malalaki so, na sila like we only take care of ourselves the only mm-hmm. thing i'm worried is like the one in the philippines like my family mm-hmm. in cebu they're mm-hmm. the my greatest worries not mm-hmm. myself not us here mm-hmm. so i always uh, like sometimes i think i have anxiety because too much thinking of what's going on you know out there so mm-hmm. when the phone rings in the middle of the night you think that something is happening there so mm-hmm. it's just like crazy yeah kumusta naman sila wala bang na naapektuhan uh, sa na phone mood father no. so, yeah. wala naman oh. they, they wow. so ito no mga brothers and sisters uh kapupulutan natin ang aral itong um, nangyari sa dalawang families nila. And ano ba ang end ng, uh, ng, uh, ng story nila? Gumaling ba silang lahat? Uh, tanungin natin sila. <laughs> Gumaling ba kayo from COVID? Um, okay. praise, praise God po, Father, yes. Um, kasi po sa mga... Sabi na natin no sa mga immediate family po namin siguro po malakas din po talaga ang family namin kay Lord. Mm-hmm. Well, ano po knock on wood po or you know keep praying wala naman pong you know dahil sa COVID eh napunta na po sa kabilang buhay. So lahat po kami gumaling. Ang sa akin lang po is ako po um yung symptoms ko po ng kanina katulad po nung tinatanong nyo kay Ate Bernadette kung nawala po yung pangamoy niya. Ako po it took me three months to get my smell back. Wow. So, tsaka po, um, it took me a while din po para mawala yung nasasabi pong hinihingalo ha po pag po, ano, pag po may exertion or may effort kang ginagawa. So, it took me a while din po. Gabi, ano? Sa, sa inyo naman, uh, Bernadette. <laughs> oh. For me, if I compare like flu, I think flu is really bad for me compared to COVID. If I compare, because I got flu before, like that one is really like, you know, mm-hmm. knock me out. But the COVID, because I keep on waiting, what's next? What's next? But nothing mm-hmm. happened until the end that it's really, really bad. So I'm mm-hmm. thankful. Praise, Praise God. God. So, uh, yung kung kung babalik uh, babalik tanawin natin yung nangyari sa inyo uh, ninyo ni Jan ano yung mga nakatulong sa inyo na para ma like ma overcome 
yun. Aside from, of course, lahat kayo gumaling, di ba? Kayo ni John gumaling. Ano sa tingin niyo ang uh, mga nakatulong para sa uh, kagalingan Prayers. ng ito? Prayers, mm-hmm. Father. Because, okay, I have to share this. When we mm-hmm. pray because we got COVID, yeah, so we're just like like a boxer. He's on the other corner and then I'm the other corner. So when we pray, <laughs> the altar is in the middle. So just like us, oh, we are like in our chair praying by our door because it's very far. Because I told John, you better not be close. You have to stay back. So when we pray, we have to say it loud so that we can hear each other because we're so far away from each other because I don't want to be close because I know you have COVID and then I have COVID. Then, you know, we have to make sure that we're not going to be contaminating each other. So, you know. So, uh, the prayers really are very important uh, part of the healing process ng yes. global pandemic. Kaya nga siguro, uh, sa mga naririnig natin, sa mga communities, sa parishes, uh, na-develop sa atin yung mga intercessory prayers. Uh, merong mga prayer brigade. Um, even uh, their own families, they develop that uh, prayer time. Oh, ba? Na-appreciate natin na mahalaga pala yun. Kasi wala ka ng ibang kakapitan eh. No? Si Lord na. <laughs> Kahit na marami kang pera, eh pag nagkasakit ka, walang kwenta yun. Oo, oh, lahat tayo pantay-pantay. Di ba? Kung magkasakit ka, kung tayo mo na, ako, delikado. But the Lord truly sustains us and I believe that na yung kapangyarihan ng pagdadasal talagang nakakagaan lang ng damdamin ng puso. It gives you the will to live and the desire to 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 ask the Lord for the grace of healing. Kasi, di ba pag nagkasakit ka na gano'n, sometimes maisip mo, sir, sana kunin mo na ako gano'n, na, nandidepress ka na eh, no? parang gusto mo nang tapusin na lang. But, with the prayer experience, this helps us to, to be aware that God really has the power to truly heal us. Ano yung mga nahil sa inyo? Uh, sabi ko na Sister Bernadette. <laughs> Aside from COVID, no? na yung prayer experience ninyo ni John. A prayer experience? Mas, mas naging close ba kayo ni John? We're, yeah, we, we're close and then the kids too. And we always remind them to pray, especially my youngest. And because every time just like, did you pray? And then she always tell me, Mom, I always pray. Because so, I always remind them. Like, not like always like be thankful, you know. Not only pray, but you have to apply it in your daily life. Because what if you keep on praying and then your attitude is still the same? So no make sense of praying, right? So you have to apply it. Wow. Is uh, kay kanina nabanggit mo na yung kahit na nung time na hindi tayo nakakapagsimba, uh, pumupunta kayo sa simbahan kahit na sa labas lang, uh, y- yun din ba ang paniniwala mo na yung dasal is very important part ng, ng healing natin? Yes po, Father. Napakalaking part po kasi, Father. Um, kasi po na, like, as a family, we we pray together. Lalo na po na-introduce din po ang prayer dun sa akin pong bunso. Kasi nga po, ang, ngayon pag may night prayer siya, nakasama na po yung prayer niya na, please um, watch over us. And I'm praying for the people who's currently sick with, you know, COVID virus. Ngayon po, ka, naka, in, ano na po, na in, unfortunately po, or in a good way din po, na-instill po sa isip ng bata since na-experience nga po namin as a family yun. So kasama po sa prayers namin gabi-gabi. Not only, 
yung pong naranasan namin, kundi po yung para sa mga taong nakakaranas ngayon ng, ng parehong sakit. Oh, wow. Ano naman ang mga natutunan natin dito sa experience natin na nagkasakit tayo? Uh, na ipinakita ng Diyos ang kapangyarihan niya no, na gumaling tayo uh, kahit papano na overcome natin yung hirap na dulot nito sa buhay natin sa ating pamilya. Ano ang pwede natin i-share sa mga nakikinig sa atin na mga learnings natin mula sa experience na ito? Okay. Sa akin po, Father, is um, it all boils down na bumalik po tayo sa basic na family po talaga. Kasi alam niyo po yun, lalo na po nung na-quarantine, kayo-kayo lang magkakasama eh. Unlike po before na talagang busy, you have lahat may activity kung saan. Nung na-quarantine po at nag-work from home, talaga ang pong nangyari is yung, yung family po naging tight-knit kasi kayo-kayo lang. So doon ko po na, ano, na, na, na thankful po ako na I get to spend more time with the mga, sa mga bata kasi I can work from home and at the same time um, see my family. Kasi po before, you work long hours. Eh ngayon, you work long hours but at least you see you see them there. So para pong as a family po, parang mas naging mas malakas yung unit as a family. Wow, that's beautiful. Isang family naman ng Minichelli. Uh, ano ang mahalagang natutunan natin dun sa pangyayari na yun na although nagkasakit tayo pero gumaling? Uh, um, I think uh, I don't know, Dre. <laughs> I cannot think. <laughs> mga, only three of us. That's why it's so hard. Like, uh, like uh, you know. <laughs> diba sabi mo nga eh uh, nagdadasal kayo ni Jan. Yes. No? Oh, um, i- ano din yun? Yung Diba, pamaraan din yun ng Diyos na mas strengthen yung, like yung faith. both of you, yung relationship yung dalawa in prayer, right? Which is very important kasi um, minsan kasi pag dahil sa labaho, uh, busy-busy tayo, minsan nakakaligtaan natin na mahalaga din pala sa buhay mag-asawa yung pagdadasal ng yung na ginagawa ninyo, which is... I, I'm uh, guilty of that, Dre. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Because sometimes I'm so sleepy at jazz. Like, hey, we have to pray. And then oh. like, I'm just gonna tell you, can you just pray for me? Because I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> But not that time. No. <laughs> oh, oh like, praise God, no? <laughs> Pakaganda lang ng, <laughs> ng experience na yun. And we have to remember that God is good pa rin. Uh, uh, always good. Always good. No? We are so, so blessed. At dahil dito ba sa pangyayari na to, um, ano naman yung yung hopes ninyo at vision? Uh, gumaling na kayo sa COVID-19. Ano yung perspective nyo ngayon? Ano yung vision ninyo? Ano yung pananaw ninyo ngayon sa buhay? Nagbago ba yung mga perspective ninyo, yung pananaw ninyo sa sa buhay? Yes. Sige, uh, Kay. Um, ang nabago po, Fal, may nabago po is, let's say, um, sa in terms po sa family, talaga pong ang number one priority right now is safety. Pag nag-uusap po kaming mag-asawa is, lalo na po kasi kaming mga ma um, mga elderly or kami pong mag-asawa may vaccine pero ka- dahil po ang aking mga anak is below 12 wala pa po silang vaccine so ang um, no, wala pa wala pa po so uh-huh. i know alam ko po may yun po ang lagi naming um, pinapakinggan o inaantabayanan kung meron na pong pwedeng vaccine sa mga bata. Pero so far po, I know 12 and below is still on trial po. So wala pa. So ang, ang napag-usapan po namin is, syempre po ang primary, um, ang primary focus po is ang safety ng mga bata. Kasi po before, 
um, iniisip din po namin yung safety. Pero not in the terms na ganito po talaga. So, so malaking bagay po yung pong aking pananaw about um, vaccine, about the future of um, being safe against COVID virus. Na yun po, napasama po talaga yun sa amin everyday life na pinag-iisipan at saka pinag-desisyonan po. Hindi ba kayo, kayo nagtampo sa Panginoon na nagkasakit kayo? Hindi ba kayo nagalit? Nagalit sa Diyos? Nagalit sa mundo? It's not God's okay. fault. Uh, oh, sige nga, oh, wow, tumasagot na siya. Oh. Okay, si, si Bernadette, oh, ano yung pananaw mo? Uh, after na na-overcome ninyo itong sakit na COVID-19, um, ano yung mga nabagong, may nabago bang uh, pananaw sa buhay? No? Naka, mga natutunan natin sa buhay? I think you just have to be careful because uh, life is short. Mm-hmm. And then, Oh, this is one thing I um I learned since the COVID time. That's why now I just travel. Like whenever I have time, I just travel because you don't really know what's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. So I do whatever I want to do as long as it's legal. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that that's what changed me. Like, mm-hmm. as long as it makes me happy, I do it as as, as long as it's legal. It's not mm-hmm. illegal. Hindi ka ba nagtampo sa Diyos o nagalit sa Diyos, nagalit sa mundo na nagkasakit kayo no. dalawang mag No, Hindi why naman. should I? No, why should I blame God? That's not God's. Or blame fault. the government or blame China. No, it's just happened. <laughs> Kasi di ba, ah, makikita natin sa news, ah, parang ang tao is naghahanap lagi ng sinong masisisi dito sa pangyayari na ito. But uh, do we really have to blame each other or blame uh, whoever the country so spread out this uh, coronavirus? Siguro the best way na lang is really to, yun, sabi nyo nga, to protect ourselves and do the the necessary things to protect Just ourselves. Just be aware. Oh, na, yeah. Di ba? Tama naman yun. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow. So, uh, any final uh, message sa mga kababayan natin, mga working mom, na dumadaan din sa ganitong situation na na problema sila sa work, tapos sa uh, mga anak nila sa family um, any parting words po okay um, sa akin lang po father is sa mga working moms po na katulad ko na habang may meeting sa Zoom eh minsan minu-mute ang Zoom dahil yung mga anak po ay nagsisigawan <laughs> sa likod you're not alone po <laughs> at <laughs> At um, uh, hindi po kayo nag-iisa na ganun din po ang marami sa atin. Um, magpasalamat po tayo dahil um, may work pa po tayo. Ako din po ay nagpapasalamat dahil um, ang Lord po is still giving us yung life po kahit ganito kahirap o may pinagdadaanan. And God is still good. So yun po ang parting words. And tsaka po keep safe. Um, ako... ako ako po nagsasabi din po sa kanila na I know may, may iba-iba po tayong beliefs regarding the vaccine but uh-huh. hinihikayat ko po yung mga tao na hindi pa po nakakapagpavaksin na sana po ay eh, mamulat po ang isip ninyo para po sa ating pagbabakuna para uh-huh. po uh, matapos na po or hindi ako hindi naman po ay eh, makontrol po natin ang COVID-19 na ito. Thank you po. Thank you. Um, so Bernadette naman. So, uh, it's ano yung mensahe mo sa mga working mom na dumaan din, na dumadaan sa ganitong uh, klase ng kahirapan sa buhay? 
no kasi may imagine mo yung uh, nanay ka pa magtatrabaho ka intindihin mo yung husband mo yung mga anak mo at nakayanan mong i-overcome lahat ng ito dahil merong Diyos na umalalay sa atin. Ngayon naman, ano yung maibibigay mong mensahe sa mga nanay din na kagaya mo na nakikinig niya? Sa akin, Father, for me, don't lost hope. Hmm. And um, just uh, keep on fighting because hmm. life is always fighting, right? For the better. Wow. Praise God, no? Talagang fighter itong dalawa, matatapang itong dalawang babae na nakapanayan po natin. We're just so blessed that they shared their strength, their hopes, and their vision. Sana po sa mga nakikinig sa atin, sabi nga nila itong dalawa na huwag tayong mawawala ng pag-asa. May awa ang Diyos. Mahal tayo ng Diyos. Amen. Amen. Welcome to the St. Therese Mission, located at the heart of the Mojave Desert along the Old Spanish Trail. The St. Therese Mission is a beautiful sanctuary of faith and a home to celebrate life. It is surrounded by a 360-degree, breathtaking view of the desert. In these grounds, you will find the St. Therese Mission Cemetery. Not only does the cemetery sustain the mission, but it also serves as a memorial to departed loved ones. We offer a wide selection of affordable cemetery property, indoor and outdoor companion wall niches, as well as distinguished family memorials and garden estates for cremated remains. These can be found in the Our Lady of Guadalupe building and around the garden of St. Therese. In the complex, one can also find the St. Therese Mission Chapel, which celebrates Catholic Mass on Sundays and other related sacraments. Flanking the chapel are original art pieces made by hand, including 10-foot statues of St. Therese, St. John Paul, and Our Lady of the Smile the Memorial of the Unborn, the Crucifix inside the Chapel, and our Stations of the Cross Monuments. The Chapel dedicates the fourth Sunday Mass of every month to the individuals whose cremated remains rest in the St. Therese Mission Cemetery. The St. Therese Mission Cemetery is the only Catholic cemetery serving the Las Vegas and Pahrump areas and has committed to providing exceptional service and a serene and sacred environment for our dearly departed loved ones. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Lord, mercy. Have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. mercy. You died, Jesus, but the source of life flowed out for souls, and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O fountain of life, immeasurable divine mercy, cover the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fountain of mercy for us. We trust in you. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fountain of mercy for us, we trust in you. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fountain of mercy for us, we trust in you. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. My dear friends, brothers and sisters here at PHLV Radio, join us 
in this program, Servants on Air, the Chaplet of the Divine Mercy, and let us now offer the different petitions and prayer requests. For the first uh, decade of the Chaplet of the Divine Mercy, we pray in a very special way. The family of uh, Catherine Tejero, also the family of Bernadette Menichel. We pray, O oh God, that may the whole families, the loved ones, continue to experience your healing grace and love. Bless, O oh God, their work, their ministry, and whatever endeavors and undertakings they have. Lead and guide them, and that they may be able to offer them for your greater glory and honor. Also, in a very special way, we pray for the complete healing of the Tachiki. And, uh, and to each and every member of their loved ones, of the Menicelli and the Yudun family, and the Piero family, who are sick. And we ask you, dear God, to touch them today in a very special way and heal them from their sickness in body, mind, soul, and spirit. Also, we pray for the many people who are affected with this COVID-19 pandemic, to those who are now recovering from this illness, those who are still confined in the hospital, Lord, touch them today, all of them, and that they may experience your healing love and grace. Eternal Father, we offer you the body and blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the world. Sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the world. Sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the world. Sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the world. Sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the world. Sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the world. Sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and the world. Think of a sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and the world. Think of a sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the world. Think of a sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the world. The second chaplet of the divine mercy, let us now offer this for all the souls in purgatory. Let us now remember our loved ones who have died. And the many people who died because of this global pandemic of the COVID-19, the forgotten souls, the souls of our loved ones, we ask the Lord to grant them eternal healing and forgiveness. In the silence of our hearts, let us now remember the names of all our loved ones and friends in uh, the holy souls in purgatory. Eternal Father, we offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Think of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Think of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Think of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Think of sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Think of sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Think of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Think of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. The third chaplet of the divine mercy, we offer this for 
all the government institutions and the leaders of uh, each countries that all of them Lord may work for the common good inspire them that they may continue to deliver services and assistance to their constituents and people who are deeply affected with this global pandemic. Inspire them by your spirit and may you lead and guide them, Lord. Give them wisdom and understanding. Our eternal Father, we offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In a token for and those who the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the world. Take of sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the world. Sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the world. Let us now offer the fourth uh, decade of the Chaplet of the Divine Mercy. Now for the many essential workers and frontliners, the doctors, nurses, to each and every medical personnel who are working in the different medical facilities, to those essential workers in different um, um, companies, those who are working in the supermarket, grocery store, um, to all the teachers, uh, accountants, uh, engineers, and to all these um, essential workers, Lord, um, they have been working and offering their services to help the economy of our country. Lord, we ask you for a special anointing and blessings to them. Also, we pray for uh, the many people who are joining us here at Servants on Air. Whatever petitions you have, please offer them now. And let us whisper to the Lord our individual prayers and petitions. Eternal Father. We offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of our dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins, sins and those, and those of, the of the whole world, world, for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and the whole world. Sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Take of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Take of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Take of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Take of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Take of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Let us now offer the fifth chaplet of the divine mercy for the Pope, especially for his complete healing and recovery. He just had a recent uh, surgery. Um, we ask a dear God for his uh, speedy recovery. Also, we pray for all the bishops and priests for their own um, renewal and conversion, continue to guide them and transform them, O oh Lord, that they may become the image of Jesus to, to 
help and assist the many people in their parishes and their churches, also to all other uh, Christian denominations and leaders in different religions that they may be guided as well, especially their people who are suffering these days. Eternal Father, we offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins Persons and those, and those of the whole world. world, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, and mercy on us and on the whole world, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world, for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy, mercy on us and in the world. Take of the sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and in the world. Sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and in the world. Sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and in the world. Take of the sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and in the world. Take of the sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and in the world. For the sake of the sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and in the world. Thank you for sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and in the world. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy mortal one, have mercy on us and in the world. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy mortal one, have mercy on us and in the world. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy mortal one. Have mercy, mercy on us and of the whole world. world. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, now and shall be without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. spirit. And may the Almighty God bless you and your families, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, good evening. This is Father Joel, and I would like to thank you for accompanying us tonight. And we're just so blessed to have uh, Kay and Bernadette for sharing their life testimony, how they overcome the horrible experience of the COVID-19. No, na tutunan natin sa sharing nila na importante talaga yung family at yung pananalig at pananampalataya natin sa Panginoon. Uh, at salamat sa courage nila na ibahagi yung kanilang karanasan sa maraming mga working mom. Sabi nga, huwag tayong patatalo sa kung ano man ang hamon at mga problema na dinaranas natin. Meron pong pag-asa, meron pong nagbibigay ng lakas sa atin. Unang-una ang Diyos, pangalawa doon ang mga mahal nating sa buhay. Sana magsilbi silang inspirasyon sa atin araw-araw para ipagpatuloy natin yung mga magagandang nasimula na natin na ibinigay at ibinahagi ng Diyos sa atin. Kaya, uh, Kay, uh, paalam na tayo. Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Again, sa mga nakikinig po ng Servants on Air dito sa PHLV Radio. Um, ako po ay inyong masugid na tagapakinig din po at uh, nagpapasalamat po ako at this time naman eh, ako po ay naging interviewee <laughs> ng ating <laughs> ng programang ito. Um, sana po sa uulitin. <laughs> at sana din po ay may natutunan din po ang ating mga viewers um, oh. o tagapakinig. Um, alam, mer- sa iba po siguro... Um, Maliit na bahagi lang po ang aking um, naranasan at maalam ko po marami pong ibang taong may mas matindi pa pong nararanasan dahil po sa COVID-19. Um, wag lang po tayong patatalo at lagi pong ang pananalig natin po sa Diyos ay wag po nating kakaligtaan or kalilimutan. To God be the glory po. Amen. Ako, thank you, Kay. Na ngayon naman si Miss Bernadette. Paalam na tayo. Thank you for watching. Oh wow, talaga daw. <laughs> oh, yun lang. Oh, yun lang. Wala ka nang iwan sa amin. Okay. No? She said, oh. Oh, wow. Copy paste. 
Ya, yeah, copy paste na lang. <laughs> oh, well, uh, believe na ako talagang uh, pinaunlakan nyo ang programa natin sa Servants on Air. Uh, sana magsilbi uh, yung experience ninyo, yung uh, ipinakita ninyong katapangan, magsilbi itong inspirasyon sa marami pang nanay na nakikinig sa atin. Kahit naman hindi nanay, sa lahat sa atin na sumubaybay sa episode na to. Once again, thank you so much. Sana nga sa ulitin. And thank you to all our uh, partners sa PHLB Radio and to all our followers. Thank you so much and have a great night. Once again, this is Father Joel Aquino signing off here at Servants on Air. God bless you and have a good night. Peace be with you. I am Father Joel Aquino. Please join me every Tuesday at 7 in the evening Pacific Time and 10 in the evening Eastern Time for an hour of conversations about Word of God and our Christian mission in relation to the many issues that we are facing today through Servants on Air here at PHLB Radio. Please download the PHLB Radio app from the Apple Store and Google Play, where we will have a wide ranging and honest discussions on such topics, especially on Christian faith and relationships. We will also be hearing experiences with God from our brothers and sisters, and hopefully this will enlighten us as to live out our day-to-day Christian life.